I want to do a short, quick video out of uh, Matthew chapter 4, Philippians chapter 3, and the first letter of John chapter 2. Um, in 1 John, the apostle is, uh, he's, he's writing three categories of believers um, and really I think it's overlooked because of the way that he addresses the letter is in different ways to each one of them but it is or even to those who are uh, fathers or young men mature in Christ he says to the first he says little children he's talking about infants the Greek word is actually talking about infants in age, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. And we got to know that he's talking about spiritually, not talking about physical age, little babies. And I run unto you, fathers, because you have known him. That is from the beginning. And we really got to understand that by some of the other things that I have taught on from the word of God from the letters of Paul. I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. You know, and again, that some of the things that I've wrote concerning uh, coming into full age in Christ, like he says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 6, having a readiness to punish every disobedience when your obedience is full. And he's talking about you know, that warfare that we have in our mind of casting down things that uh, oppose themselves against the knowledge of God and bringing it, everything into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And here he's saying, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. And we've got to understand faith and the love of God as Paul describes it in 1 Corinthians 13, he says, the love of God believes all things. We've got to understand what he meant by that. It's like you see the way Paul strives to talk to the assemblies in his letters. And he says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of this world and the world is passing away and the lust or the desire thereof but he that does the will of god abides forever or will remain forever Little children, it is the last time, as you have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Okay, so in Matthew chapter 4, he is recording the temptations of Jesus as Immediately when he was baptized of John the Baptist, he came up out of the water, he prayed, the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove and remained as a testimony to John, because this is what Jehovah had said to John, whom you see the Spirit of God lighting upon and remaining, this is the Christ. And so Matthew is given testimony of the temptations because immediately after that, you see that he was led in the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. And he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And you got to see the parallel of that when Moses went on Mount Horeb. He was there 40 days and 40 nights. It doesn't say that the first time. 
because he came town before the time because the children of Israel uh, had spurred Aaron into taking their gold and throwing it into the fire and this molten calf coming out that they could worship him because they were like, I, we don't know what's become of this Moses who brought us up out of Egypt. So he was he went back up on the mount and you got to see the first time the tablets that were written were a, were a work of God, a handwriting of God. The second time he went up there with new tablets because when he came down the first time and he heard the commotion and he saw what was going on, he, he cast the tablets to the ground and broke them. So the second time he went up there, it is said that Moses wrote those same commandments on tablets himself. But he was there 40 days and 40 nights. So you got to understand when Jesus was led of the Holy Spirit into the wilderness where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights and it did not eat, neither drink. And it says afterward, when he was hungry, in verse 2, in verse 3, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if you be the son of God, command these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And this is what John is saying over here in First John chapter uh, 2. He says in verse 17, the world is passing away and the desire of it but he that does the will of God re shall remain forever. Children, is the last time, and as you've heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are many Antichrists in the world, whereby you know it is the last time. Okay, well now, to give a little more context to that, because he says that, Love not the world, in verse 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And you know, and this also goes back to uh, what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6, when he says, Those that are after the flesh, mind the things of the flesh. Those that are after the Spirit, mind the things of the Spirit. And you got to understand the Greek word translated mind has to do with the affections of the mind. What we have the affections of our mind set on, even after we are born again, is what we are going to obey. That's what we are going to follow after. That's how we either walk in the flesh or walk in the spirit according to what we have our mind set on. And in Philippians chapter 3, he says, let us very, and starting in chapter 3, verse 15, let as many as be of full wage be thus minded. If anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal this unto you. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, or the truth that we, whatever truth we have attained to, let us walk by the same rule, be of the same mind. And you got to understand what he's talking about being of one mind, being like minded. And because you see, when John and Peter came back from being uh, beaten for the testimony of Jesus Christ unto the assembly of the congregation of believers, and they'd heard the testimony and they had found they that peter said they had been counted worthy to suffer for the name of christ it says that they were all in one place in one cord with one mind when the glory of god filled the place and shook it and i mean we got to understand that because what jesus is talking about Father, I pray that they may be one as you and I are one, that that they may be one with us. And we, we need to understand that unity. But here he says, Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk 
so as you have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, that have their affections set on earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to do all things to himself. And this comes back to what he said in 1 Corinthians 15, 36. Full the body you sow is not given life unless it dies. And this comes back to our spiritual worship to God, the beginning of our spiritual worship to God. As offering, I beseech you, I call you near to listen in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. By the mercies of God, present your bodies as living sacrifices, which is holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is the beginning of our spiritual worship to God, our spiritual service to God. As, as Paul said in Romans 8, 10, If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but our spirit is alive because of righteousness. In verse 8, uh, chapter Romans 8, 8, he says, so then those that are in the flesh cannot please God, because you got to see what he wrote in Romans 7, 5. For when, when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members, our flesh, to bring forth fruit unto death. And so we got to understand, in verse 6, he says, having died to what held us, having died to the law that held us prisoners to sin. And he describes that in Galatians chapter 3, the, our schoolmaster. But once faith comes, we're no longer under the schoolmaster. But he describes that again in Galatians 5, 16, 17, and 18. I say then walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill or carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh envies against the spirit, the Holy Spirit we're sealed with, and the spirit against the flesh, and the two are contrary, for you cannot do what you will. But if you be led by the spirit of God, you're under no law. That goes back to Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. But in a lot of modern translations that have used corrupt text to translate that have cut that last half off. And it, it, it's wounded the believer's ability to discern the will of God, the Word of God, which we live by. Because our faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Hearing comes by the Word of God, and faith comes by hearing. We need to understand that. You can't just have one without the other. It goes back to Mark chapter 4, 23 through 25. You know, you that have ears to hear, take heed, pay attention. The measure you use to hear, it should be measured back to you. And more, what more ability to hear and understand the word of God should be given unto you. But he who has not what a willingness to hear, even what he has previously had, shall be taken from him. We need to understand. And the only way that life is given to our mortal body is by putting it to death to let Christ live his life in us. That's the faith we live by, Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is the faith. This is the faith. And that begins in water baptism because that's the only, that's the only place that the body is put to death. And Paul describes baptism for the dead in 1 Corinthians 15, 29, when he says, you fool, why, 
why are they baptized for the dead if the dead do not rise? And so in in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4, you not know as many as were baptized into Jesus Christ. No other name, no other name. Acts 4.12, there is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. Yeah, you know, so we got to understand. Our hearing comes by the word of God. Our faith comes by hearing. But the hearing comes by the word of God. Unless we are putting our flesh to death, as he describes in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, that we're not able to, to come to know the will of God if we're not putting the flesh to death as our spiritual worship. Because he says, I beseech you by the mercies of God to present your bodies as living sacrifices that which is holy and acceptable unto God that you may prove, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will. So, unless we're putting our bodies to death by the mercies of God as our spiritual worship, we cannot know God's will. And, and the first thing Jesus went through when he was filled with the Holy Spirit and endued with power from God on high was to be tempted of the devil after he had fasted and prayed. And you got to see the be in the beginning when Eve was tempted, she was tempted with the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. I mean, go go read the third chapter there. I mean, it's just, that's where John got his, you know, all that is in the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life are not of the Father, but of this world. I mean, we need to understand. Amen.